Hi there everyone, it's a very cold London day, but it's very warm here in the Royal Society. It's very warm here. Either someone has turned the heating up too high, or it's the science energy emanating from this awesome box. We will open it in mere seconds. Where has this come from, Keith? The box ultimately came from Russia. A list of the contents, we will come to that. Mm. But let's have a look. Here we go. What's in the box? It's a bunch of pretty rocks. Very pretty rocks. I like a good rock. We very often get gifts from visiting delegations. Oh, I think this is a really good one. And these were guests from the Russian Academy, so a big mm. deal. I tell mm. you what, when our friend, Professor Polyakov, the chemist, finds out that we were looking at Russian chemicals, yep. he's going to be really disappointed we did this behind his we, back. We kind of saved it for him a little bit, but you know, it's, he's so hard to get these days. He's such a star. Yeah, he is. <laughs> this video is for you, Professor. So we have a bunch of minerals. All of this presumably has come from Russia. They were mined yes, or that, found that's in right. Russia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Each one's got a label. There are two elephants in the room. Let's deal with them first. This one is falling apart. <laughs> That's right, it's, it's presumably reacting to the air or to moisture and as you can see it's crumbling quite nicely there. And according to my list of contents, that is actually pyrite made from iron and sulphur from the Zabaikal region, Kalengu. The subtext there is the interesting bit. Raw material for the obtaining of sulphur and sulfuric acid. All right, so pyrite is where you get sulphur from. There you go. Yeah, so that could be a clue to why it's crumbling away there. And the other elephant in the box, mm. one of them is wrapped in paper and has warning signs. And also paper, yes. This little note that comes with it says, please keep this specimen wrapped as it will lose colour when exposed to light. This is hackmanite, which has got a very long formula. It involves sodium, chlorine, aluminium, silicon, and some oxygen and hydrogen. The professor would be proud, Brady. Yes. <laughs> A rare mineral unusual in its properties, when first fractured, it is of a bright crimson colour. In the sun or in daylight, it quickly loses colour and becomes colourless. The colour is easily restored by ultraviolet irradiation. Is it going to be bright crimson? Well, how's that for disappointing? Little bit of pink still left in it, but I think this is in need of a recharge at some point. Here's the original list. This was what the Russians supplied with it so that their colleagues would know what it is. So it's not should match to the labels in each specimen. Very helpfully, all written there in Russian, so we have no idea what it says. Yep, but we have a translation. So here's what's in the box. We have apatite, which is what Keith and I had before lunch a few moments ago. Delhalite, astrophilite, sphene or titanite. Udialite, Hackmanite, which we've already looked at, Eusingite, my pronunciation here must be terrible. I'm impressed you usually give these to me to read. I know, I didn't think it through before <laughs> I agreed to do this. I thought, oh, I make chemistry videos, this will be easy. Easy, yeah. Ramsayite, <laughs> Mermanite, Pentlandite, Magnetite, I've heard of that one, Vermiculite, Francolite, Topaz, Apophyllite, Alunite, Bornite, Tourmaline, then we have our collapsed Pyrite, Sulphur, that's easy. Willuite, aura pigmentum, that's a mouthful. Rhodonite, lazarite, and that's it. It is a mixture of material that's used as building material, as you can see some oh, of them yeah. are, have been that faced. One? That looks lovely. Yeah, you could see that in a, in a bank or a public building, couldn't you? Or the halls of the Royal Society. Indeed, yes, well we do have a marble hall. Come on Keith, look at this one. It's, uh, you, you like the shiny ones, don't you? I like the shiny, shiny. Maybe the ones with small crystals in, which like that, which is pretty... Keith, that's boring. This, <laughs> this one's better. You can see through it. 14, it's been misplaced in Has that it, case. Oh, this yeah. one's been misplaced. Everyone, I have an announcement. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has done a bit of shuffling of the minerals. So, you know that excellent routine we went through before telling you what was what? No, not all of them are exactly right. People have been playing with them and moving them around, I'm sure, while they've been on display. Quite a few of these specimens are named after the geologists who were associated with them, often the ones who discovered them. So quite often the names that you read out are a kind of who's who of the, the geological community in the late 19th century. You imagine when the Russian delegation handed this over, that was what was in their mind. It was kind of not only nice scientific samples, but mm. a celebration of scientists. That's right, and I think some of the names are just penciled in there. Niels Viggo Ussing, who was Danish. Ramseyite, number eight, was named after Wilhelm Ramsey, who was Finnish. The Hackmanite we looked mm. at was named after Victor Axel Hackman, who was also Finnish. 
So this is kind of a mini rock map of Europe, if you like. These guys have found these minerals, been named after them, uh, and here they all are in a box. One last question. I mean, I know you are an archivist and you love seeing things mm. in pristine condition and well looked after. Does that pyrite just make your heart break? It's part of the natural process of things, you know, and minerals and chemicals do react. So, you know, there's a story to be told there. I think that's Keith putting a positive spin on things there. Yep. <laughs> Edward Troughton provided instruments for Cato when Cato came back to London. He became fascinated by the business of making more and more accurate instruments. So this would have been on the Indian survey, this instrument. So this was shipped yeah, over yeah. to India, carted mm. all around the continent to take measurements and then brought back here. That's right, yeah, yeah. Mm. Most of the Royal Society's instruments, you know, they're, they're kind of revered museum objects these days, but they've had hard working lives, most of them, and they were loaned out and, and used by scientists. Like you, Keith, revered, but you've had a hard working life. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I should be in a case like this. <laughs>